In this video, we will show you how to replace your air suspension compressor. On this Lincoln Navigator, this will be located on the passenger side front of your engine compartment. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. Make your way into the passenger compartment along the passenger side. We're going to remove a couple trim panels. To remove this, you can carefully reach underneath and give it a little tug. If you needed to, you could also use a trim tool to lift it up. We'll just give this a quick inspection and we can set that aside. Now we can grab onto our rubber seal. Just give that a little tug. Be careful not to damage it any. After you've done that, we'll continue on to removing this panel as well. For this one, we're just gonna grab onto it and pull it straight rearward. You can tell it has a couple little tabs here. Quick inspection, set that aside. Now that we have the paneling out of the way, we can reach right inside this area and you're going to find the air suspension switch. Just go ahead and reach in and switch that to the off position. Now we can make our way under the hood. Let's remove the jack handle from the area. We'll lift this up and out of the washer fluid tank. Once that's broken free, you can remove it from its two forward clips. We'll set this aside. Now we can remove the washer fluid reservoir. For this, you'll find two 13 millimeter headed bolts, one right along the side, the other one's down in between the reservoir and the battery itself. Now we can make our way over here, disconnect the electrical connector. Quick check for corrosion, you can set that aside. Now just below that area, you're going to find two washer fluid hoses. We'll disconnect the rearward one. There we are, slide that off of there. Now let's grab onto this and remove it from the area. Now we can remove the other hose. I'm just going to mark this one so I remember which one it goes to. Set this aside. Now with that out of the way, you have a nice clear view of your air suspension compressor. Let's continue by disconnecting the wiring harness. For this wiring harness, you should find two locking tabs, one on either side. This one. Looks like both of them are already broken, but typically you can just get underneath those, give them a little tug with a small pocket screwdriver and separate them. Let's give that a pull. Double check both sides for corrosion. Now we can move along to our three eight millimeter headed bolts. We'll use our eight millimeter to loosen all three of these. Make our way straight down here. Let's get this last one. Now we can reach down in here. We're going to start pulling this up and out. But keep in mind, you do still have two hoses connect to this end over here. A little tug. It's got a little bracket that you need to slide underneath this area. Now once you have this pulled away, we can access these two hoses. Now to remove these two hoses, you can continue on using a trim tool or even a small screwdriver. Carefully get up against the orange piece and we're going to press that against the compressor area. While we're pressing that up against there, we'll also be pushing the hose. Once you have the whole thing pressed up against, continue on by pulling just the hose away. There's one, we'll just give it a quick inspection. Do the same to the other. Once you have both of those hoses disconnected, reach in here and remove the compressor assembly. Now 
There it is, friends. All right, friends, let's get ready to install our brand new air suspension compressor. We'll take this and start putting it down into position. Before we slide it down too far, let's continue on with our two air lines. Now you're going to notice that you have four ports on the back side of the compressor. We only need to use two of these, so we'll connect the hoses into two of the ports, and then we'll use two of our little plugs to block the other two. Slide this in as far as you can. Give it a tug to make sure it's completely secured inside there. We'll do the same to the other one. There we are. Just double check them both here. Now in your kit, you'll find that it came with a bag of three of these. We're going to be using two in this application. Just go ahead and take the small end and slide it right into one of those ports. Once you have that in there, go ahead and give it a little tug, just like you did on those air hoses. Once you have that in there, do the exact same thing to the other open port. That slid right into position. Once you have it in and behind this area, continue on with your three 8mm headed bolts. We're going to start each of them in before we tighten any of them. All right, let's tighten them up. Let's connect our electrical connector here. Now we can start reinstalling our washer fluid tank. Let's make sure that we put those hoses in the proper positioning. Continue on by putting this down and into place. Once it's in place, continue on by starting in each of your 13 millimeter mounting bolts and then snug them up. This one's a little bit harder to get into place. Commonly you can just use a magnet to get it started on there. Let's get our jack handle in place. Now we can make our way back into the passenger compartment and flip that switch to the on position. Once you have it in the on position, let's continue on with that plastic paneling. For the plastic paneling, let's have a look at the back side. You'll find that you have two locking tabs. Those will fit into their corresponding holes. in the position. Let's grab onto this. Now that we have that on there, let's continue on with our rubber seal. Now we can install our side trim panel. You'll find that you have several tabs making their way all the way along the side and one at the far end. Let's make sure everything aligns while we press it into position. All right, friends, we've got that back together. Let's make our way to the passenger compartment, put the key in the on position, and wait for that compressor to start running. There we are, I can hear it click on. All right, I can hear it running. At this point, you wanna let it get up to its proper running height, and then after that, take your vehicle for a road test down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.